Well, the rain is here in full force and it's bringing the flooding in its wake. We're taking you live to York County, feeling the brunt of this storm on the CBS 21 weather warn day. Some similar scenes in Harrisburg. This is a live look at Cameron Street. Is it Cameron Street? Not visible right there. So much rain continues to pour into Dauphin County. So how long can we expect this rain to last? It's moving fast, but the flooding just beginning as the remnants of Ida continue to dump waves of rain across the region. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joel D. Smith. We've got crews all over our area tracking the showers and the flooding. All those prone areas, we're going to take a look at them. But right now, we're starting with Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell getting us ready for what's already happened, but really what's next to. Well, the good news is, Joel D., we finally see the back edge, the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not done with this yet. Let me go ahead and show you the uh, flash flood warning uh, here. Oh, we're going to go ahead and show you some video here. This is in Hershey, and you know those uh, ball fields that are literally right next to the high school and the middle school uh, flooding. We've seen this before in these big events, so, yep, there's flooding at Hershey and that baseball field underwater. The good news here is this will drain pretty quickly as the rain lets up tomorrow, but and then, of course, there's the cleanup and the damage. Let's get back to the uh, uh, flash flood flood warnings. That's the area shaded in red there. And then we have a watch that's in yellow. So those are the two active warnings at this point. Let me give you the good news here because uh, as I mentioned, we do kind of see the back edge of the storms here just now approaching into Franklin County. So some of the heaviest rain still out ahead of it, but we're starting to see the back edge. Let me widen out and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here. As you see some heavy rain still pushing into Franklin County, but notice there's a couple of areas. Let me take the clouds away and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's some pockets here that are actually a little bit drier than the rest of us. So we're not finished with the rain, but there are some areas in the western counties that are starting to improve. Still very heavy rain here through York and Lancaster. This is going to exacerbate a flooding problem that we've already got ongoing. Here's your future cast. Follow along here because it starts to taper off in our western counties by 7, 8 o'clock here. Franklin County's in the clear. By 8, 9 o'clock, Harrisburg is in the clear. By 9 and 10 o'clock, most of the area is clear of any rain. So that is good news. We finally see uh, the ending here. Still though, between now and and then we could lay down another inch or two, maybe three in a couple of spots to the east, but all of this will be moving off to the east and getting out of our area. There is still that severe weather risk. I don't think it's a real high, but we've seen a couple of areas, especially just to our southeast in Maryland, see that risk of a tornado. So that is still there in our southeast counties. But we do see this rain tapering off through mid evening. But even after the rain ends, the flood threat continues. Remember, the creeks are still rising. That road might be washed out. Don't take this stuff for granted know that we are still under a flood warning for a lot of areas into tomorrow. Joel D, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Tom. Yeah, parts of York County were under that tornado warning earlier. That cleared, but there's still plenty of flooding. So let's go live to Michael Gorsinger to check out conditions right now. Michael. Joel D, definitely the worst of the conditions that we've seen all day long in about the last half hour, and that's causing a bunch of water rescues. In fact, right along Triesville Road right here, just down uh, the street, a man was just rescued after being stuck. He actually went by this barricade and ended up getting stuck in the water and that proving the case that you should not pass these road closed signs. But as you can see the water right here, that gives you an idea just about how intense this water is coming down in the last 45 minutes or so. It literally has taken the water down the street and the cone that was blocking the road now is actually way down here. So you can just tell the current of water that's going down towards Crutz Creek. Now, the Crutz Creek is a, an area that floods a lot and right at the basin of Friesville Road, right at the creek is Prince Mobile Home. We're being told that there are some evacuations that could be coming in the very near future. At this point, they hope to be able to get the people out via vehicles. However, it's gotten bad in the past where they've had to get them out by boat. Again, Prince Mobile Home could be being evacuated in a very short, a very short amount of time. And just finally, this is Kutz Creek behind me here. I just talked to a neighbor who says that that is not normal. In fact, that normally Kutz Creek is actually on the other side of that tree, this water overtaking a bunch of the backyards, causing a lot of problems. So keep in mind, do not pass barricades like that. Again, a water rescue man rescued safely. However, it took an intense amount of first responders to get that man out of his vehicle, which was stuck after he did pass that barricade. Certainly a lot of rain in the last 45 minutes to an hour, causing a bunch of dire situations here in York County. That's very latest from here in York County. Joel D, back to you. 
Yeah, so we saw that. You're mm -hmm. saying that maybe the worst is over there for the stuff coming down, but it means the drainage still continues yeah, for a while. Yeah, and you see it there. The flooding's going to continue, so the rain can end, but that water's still got to go somewhere. And what happens in that situation, these back roads, maybe the shoulder is washed out. Uh, you think you can go around something? All of a sudden, there's no road underneath your car. Right, and then those folks have to take care of you, and they're right. not taking care of somebody else they might need as well. Not worth it. Just turn around, don't drown. Right, so we've been covering this flooding, plaguing parts of uh, Harrisburg area as well. So we know for weeks it's been a trouble. They tried to drain some of the stuff yesterday. We saw that. Let's see if it all worked out. Samantha York is on Cameron Street. Samantha, what are you seeing? Joel D, good evening. Yeah, we're along Cameron Street right now. Street being the operative word because it's looking a little bit more like a waterfront, if you ask me. And believe it or not, we're right now currently on the sidewalk. You can see this car actually going past the barricades, which you were just talking about how we're not supposed to be doing. And you can just see that water pooling around the car as they continue on past us. Just looking at some of the depth of this water, this is about three feet, I would say, close to it. It's about up to my hip length, and uh, you can see just how far it went underneath there. And just to give you some more perspective, over here you can see our car is parked. When we parked this about 30 minutes ago, the water was not up that far. But just coming down this way, when we were here for about two hours, excuse me, what? What was that? No, you can't. You really should be turning around. That's what PennDOT says. They advise you to turn around because you could get ticketed if you do this. All right, so yep, you can see him. He, he's going to be backing up on this road instead of going straight forward just because you can see how deep that water is around him. He's reversing. Sir, you may want to be turning up this way um, because I'm not sure that he can get too far back with the truck there. But this is kind of the scene that we've been seeing all day long. This flooding water is continuing to get higher and higher as the day progresses. Definitely, as we were talking about before, Penda and Pennsylvania State Police are urging people not to drive through these high waters. It's not only a risk to you, it's also a risk to first responders that then have to respond to you. So we'll continue to cover this. Fortunately, this gentleman is getting off of this roadway, off of Cameron Street, so he can hopefully get back to some safe ground. And we'll continue to follow this for you, but I'll send it back to you, Joldy. Where was that person trying to go? I'm glad you, you get him in a safer direction, but where was he trying to go? Did he tell you where I'm he wanted to go? I'm not sure. He was trying to go down this way, Joel D. He was <laughs> trying to go through Cameron Street, oh, which as even you can worse see, that all way. barricades. We have flashing lights. And if you come back over looking this way, they do have trucks on the end of Cameron Street directing traffic to go around. They have bright yellow arrows telling you not to go this way. So they definitely do have the signage up to have people avoid this area. Well, it should be obvious, but I'm glad you gave him the heads up as well. Thanks, Samantha. We'll check in with you in just a little bit. Wow. All right. So remember, folks, turn around, don't drown. It, it, it's, it's obvious sometimes, but still some people trying to go for it. We're not going to go to uh, Ed, who's at the tag board. Yeah, you know, sometimes the water looks calm on the top, but then deep below the water's moving pretty fast. So anytime you see water covering the road, turn around. Don't drown. We can't say that enough. I want to show you some impressive uh, video out of York Township Park in uh, York County. This is near Spry. Uh, look at that. Look at all of that water. This is a small creek. Can you see that metal bridge? They installed a metal bridge 10 years ago because Lee took the wooden bridge that was there out when Lee came through more than 10 years ago. So that was recently taken as flash flooding is still a pretty, pretty big issue down there. Also out towards Pittsburgh, 41 people rescued on this bus. They had to be rescued by boat because the bus got into some flash flood water. Luckily, everybody on the bus okay. And then down in Maryland, where we've seen a bigger severe weather threat today, uh, check this out. This is very impressive. Uh, you can see this is a tornado, kind of hard to see, but you see the debris flying around? Yeah, it's picking up uh, pieces of uh, wood. Uh, I don't really know what the debris is. Could be parts of a house, but yeah, you can clearly see uh, the debris flying through the air there and the person that tweeted this tornado going through downtown Annapolis. So that was just a few years ago. Uh, our threat here more or less the flooding, but there's still a severe weather threat, especially off to the south that we're going to be monitoring, of course, through the evening. Back to you. Yeah, we'll check in with you a little bit later on. So the Hershey area seeing a lot of standing water. Remember at the top of the show, we showed you that submerged baseball field. Well, CBS 21's Asia tab is in downtown Hershey for a look at what it's like now. Asia. 
Yeah, Joel D., right now a lot of residents out here are not going by the uh, turn around, don't drown. You can see right behind me. Right now, I'm on Coco Avenue along a shopping center, and the giant sh shopping center is right next to me. Now, you can see cars just driving through, which is something that authorities have been urging, including Governor Wolf this morning, drivers not to do. Um, not only is it dangerous, but you can't even see the center line in the middle of the street, and you can see this car. They're going relatively fast. Whew, hopefully they make it home safe. Oh, no, they're turning into the parking lot. And this way. Let me move up closer this way. You can also see there's also waves that are coming this way. All the grass is full. And then we also witnessed a tree falling down across the street in that area that way. So, again, if you're out, turn around. Don't drown. Do not underestimate these floods and these waters on this here street. Joel D, sending it back to you in the studio. All right, stay safe. And don't forget, folks, anytime that bad weather is coming your way, we have you covered with our free CBS 21 weather app. And you can find it on your phone's app store by searching CBS 21 WX. Our weather warning day coverage just getting started. This is the scene in New Cumberland as drivers try to navigate some standing water there as well. A look at some of the other potentially dangerous areas when we return. Welcome back. It is a CBS 21 weather warn day. Let me show you some images from today. This takes us to Gettysburg, Lincoln Estates, courtesy of Lori Franzconi and uh, not looking good in the backyards there. Some of those places in Gettysburg. We've gotten five, six, seven inches of rain in a lot of locations and that uh, water has nowhere to go. So please be careful. Let's go ahead and show you some good news. I'm starting to see the back edge of our uh, major rainfall here. So a lot of the heavy stuff moving off to the northeast. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's still plenty to go, but we're kind of seeing an area like this where you see that little hole in the radar indicating a little break from that heaviest rain as you see right in here. So that is some good news. We're starting to see the back edge. And once again, as I show you a little wider here, you'll start to see that back edge just now starting to approach Franklin County. So you're going to see it taper off from west to east as we go through the evening hours. Your coverage continues here on CBS 21. The remnants of Ida continue to cause flooding. We're back with more in just a moment. And so well, let's take a look at all of this rain right here, closing off an intersection in Derry Township. This is near Bullfrog Valley Park. You can see just that water pulling up on the road. And of course, they're blocking off. Don't want anybody going that way. All this starts with those feeder creeks and streams that go into the Susquehanna River eventually. And so we're watching that. CBS 21's Andrea Finney tracking some of the water levels already out there in Cumberland County. Hi, Andrea. Jaldi, I am here in Lower Allen Township, right off of the Yellow Breaches Creek. And since I've been, I've been here maybe about 30 minutes, and the creek has already risen. I've seen full trees floating down the river, and I, actually, uh, you can catch some of this debris right now floating down the river. But I am here with a homeowner. Uh, his home is prone to flooding. If you can see, it's already approaching uh, his yard, and he's really getting prepared for flooding uh, as that rainfall subsides, uh, the water level will still rise. So he's already getting his furniture ready. He's making sure that everything is together here in his house. This is Rob. And thank you so much for joining me, Rob. Uh, so tell me, you've been, this has been a work in progress all day, and really over the span of two days. Yeah, over two days. Um, basement was yesterday, a couple hours to shell everything out of the basement. And today, my kids and my wife and I got everything off the floor. Uh, laundry's mm -hmm. washer and dryer. We got the furniture that needs uh -huh. to be moved. So got everything we could possibly get. And you'll notice everything is up. And um, what was it, 10 years ago, you said the water was actually up to the window seal there. Yes, yeah, yeah. In 2011, it was, it crested at 14.7 feet, and mm -hmm. that was about up to the window sill. So walk me through how high the creek has to be. It's about, again, five, six feet right now. How high does it have to be in order to really start impacting your yard, impacting your basement, getting into the house? Well, it's about six feet now, and you can kind of see it's getting close to the edge of the bank. So at seven feet, it'll be at the bottom of the yard. By eight feet, halfway up the yard. Ten feet, it'll be right up to the patio. 
uh, start getting scary. By 11 feet, it's starting to impact the basement, and anything higher than that is trouble. And <laughs> Well, at least the creek is predicted to crest just below 11 feet, so hopefully that water didn't get inside your home. But um, we will keep you in, in our thoughts for sure because, I mean, it has to be a frustrating situation. But for now, I'll send it back to you. Wow, they are cutting it close. Thanks a lot, Drea. So we're keeping an eye on so many roads as well. CBS 21's Nick Volturo checking out the road conditions along Route 283 in Lancaster County. Nick, you're on the road, right? Yeah, Joel D, we're on the road right now uh, in Mount Joy headed towards Lancaster. And uh, let me just give you an idea of what the road looks like. Uh, you can see right now the uh, there's a lot of spray coming up from driving on the highway, which are making visibility a little bit tougher than normal. And so one of the things right now, what you're really seeing is you're seeing a lot of people that are actually reducing speed. They're heating the signs. There's signs posted all over from the state that is saying to people to use caution and to slow down while they're on the roads. And if you take a look, you can see everyone's got their lights on. People, uh, you know, people are obeying the speed limit. They're reducing speeds. Obviously, there's a lot of water that's pooling up, but uh, people seem to be driving safe from what we're seeing. But the other thing that you really have to be careful and cautious of is when these big trucks do come speeding by, a lot of times that'll just splash up a huge load of water. And what that can really do is cause some visibility issues. We've seen some people stopping short along the ride just because, you know, they, they weren't able to see because of that water that just kind of overtook. So we're, we're over here in the car. We're going to keep being here on the road and keep you posted as we, uh, as we continue our travels through central Pennsylvania. Well, that's it for now. Uh, Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what we can expect coming up, you know, as this storm progresses and as it eases out through the night. All right, thanks, Nick. Fortunately, we're starting to see the end of the worst of the rain. I'll show you the radar in just a second. I want to take you and show you some video. Oh, no, look at that. I know you got a big truck, but probably shouldn't be doing that either. This is Belmont Street in York, and uh, big or small, we tell you, don't drive uh, through that water. You don't know what's underneath. The road could be washed out. Uh, but yeah, we're still tracking a lot of flooding and here's the deal. I want to emphasize this as the rain tapers off and comes to an end tonight. You're still going to be dealing with that flood threat. So the creeks and streams on the rise. So I want to start you there. Take a look. What we've done is we've set this up where uh, where the creek is now, then the crest and then the flood stage on your right, just to put it in perspective for you. So Sherman Creek at Shermansdale is the one that always goes up the quickest, comes down the quickest, headed to 12 and a half feet overnight tonight. Flood stage there on your right at nine feet. Show you the yellow breaches in Canada. Camp Hill, five feet now, pushing six, and then uh, you see it should crest just, prior, just shy of 11 feet uh, overnight tonight into tomorrow. Flood stage there is seven feet, so we showed you our friend Rob uh, dealing with that nervousness of just how high that creek's going to get. Connor de Gwinnick near Hosetown, uh, three and a half feet, going to crest at 10.7. Again, flood stage here on the right-hand side of your screen. Let's take you to the East Shore and Swatera Creek at Harper Tavern, going almost to 15 feet. Flood stage there is nine, so that's going to be certainly on the high side. That flows down to Hershey, where we're at 6.75 expected to crest around 12. Flood stage there is at 7 feet. Let's take it to Lancaster now. The Conestoga River at 5.5 on its way to almost 15 feet. Flood stage there is 11 feet. And let's jump over to the big guy, the Susquehanna, expected to crest uh, underneath flood stage, which is 17 at 14 feet. Different story at Marietta, though. We're going to be right at flood stage at 49.7 and at Sunbury 18.5. But notice this, that won't be until Friday. Remember, there's a lag as all that water works its way to toward the uh, Susquehanna. All the red, that is a flash flood warning. It continues, but I'll show you a couple of other reds as you get over towards Philadelphia. That is a tornado warning as we speak. That's that red that you see just under the radar. Notice this, all the heavy stuff is kind of starting to move off to the east. This is encouraging to me. Yeah, there's still some rain showers here, but you're not seeing those oranges and yellows, and we're actually seeing some pockets of breaks in the radar. So yes, it's still rainy, just not with that intensity that we saw for the better part of the day. And you can see that heavy rain starting to push over towards Allentown and areas there. Let me show you this. We asked the radar, okay, where did you see the heaviest rain so far today? Here's Harrisburg, but look at this swath through York County down into portions of Adams County, including Hanover. That's where some of the heaviest rain has fallen. So let's put some values on that. How about five and a, uh, 5 5.7? Six inches of rain has fallen here. 6.4. How about that number? 7.3 run along the Maryland border just south of Hanover. So that's going to leave a lot of residual flooding even on into tomorrow. Let's give you some good news as the storm tracks out. Follow me here. I think we're finished with this by about 7 o'clock in Franklin County 
8 o'clock in Harrisburg, 9 o'clock in Lebanon County, and most of the area by 10 o'clock, it is out of here. So that's the progression this evening. But again, we could still dump another inch or two in many spots. The rain chances really diminish as we get through the evening hours and we get a chance to dry out overnight. Tomorrow's going to be a fabulous day to at least dry out. So an inch and a half still possible on top of what we've already seen, but the heavy stuff is off to the east of us there. Let's give you some quick numbers. Uh, meteorologist Ed Russo was racking some of these up. I think they're from a little earlier this afternoon, so keep that in perspective. Uh, West Shore there, Shiremas Town at five inches. Harrisburg, uh, a record for today for September 1st, 4.11. Cashtown, Adams County, almost four inches. Palmyra, almost four inches. And Hershey, almost there as well. One caution as I leave you here, creeks are above flood stage. They're going to continue to rise above flood stage into tomorrow. That means roads are blocked. We've shown you some pictures of that. Turn around, don't drown. And it doesn't matter, it seems how many times we say it, people still do it. So some heavy rain here through the early evening. It's tapering off for everybody by 9 p.m. Then we're drying things out overnight. Notice tomorrow it's going to be much, much cooler, but it's going to be a bit windy. So think about trees that are in saturated ground or power lines that are still susceptible to a pretty decent wind gust. But really nice into the weekend. Friday, sunshine, low humidity, 76. Same for Saturday. Another chance for rain, but not until Sunday. Just some scattered showers as we head on into uh, next week as well. So at least we get a couple of days to dry out until D, just what the doctor ordered after an event like this. We're going to need to take a breath, and it looks like we're going to get it. Let's do it. All right, thanks a lot. We'll be right back after this. Thank you so much. We've been getting some photos shared on our Chime In app. Let's look at what you've been sending in. Scenes from your own backyard. This is from Denise Alstead in Edders. You see that stream kind of split right there. The creek overflowing. Thank you for sending that in. Let's take a look at another photo from Desiree Irvin. This is Red Line. Look at that water uh, just pulling up there right between those homes. Uh, just kind of a gorge filling with water. And it just keeps on coming. Uh, once again, if you want to share some photos with us, it's kind of cathartic, a way to just see we're all in this together. Very easy to do. Go to our website, cbs21.com or the Chime In app.